as we all know that columns are vertical members to carry the superstructure load and safely transfer to the footy hence it is very important to provide the adequate size of column to carry the superstructure load now the question comes what is the size of the column say for example if it is a g plus 1 building what is the size of the column we need to provide if it is a g plus 3 building what is the size of the column we need to provide so we cannot say simply like if it is a g plus 1 building this is the standard size of the column if it is a g plus 2 building this is the standard size of the column so there are some factors which we need to consider while finding out the size of the column the size of the column depends on loads coming on the structure distance between the columns and height of the building these are the three major important factors which we need to consider while deciding the size of the column if the load coming on the structure is more and if we don't provide the adequate size of the column for that load then the structure may lead to collapse so this is very very important because columns are major structural element which is transferring the superstructure load to the foundation so we need to provide the adequate size of the column according to the loads coming on the structure hey friends welcome back to civil engineering mastery in this video let's discuss in detail about how to calculate the loads coming on the column how to find out the size of the column and let's check the safe load carrying capacity of the column as per is 456 2000 so without delay let's begin first let's take this g plus 1 building and calculate the loads coming on column here we have four columns c1 c2 c3 c4 and similarly we have four beams b1 b2 b3 b4 the size of the panel is 11 feet by 11 feet let's take this c1 column and calculate the loads first let's understand the geometry of the structure this is the plinth level and next one is the first floor level and here it is the second floor level first we need to calculate the load from slab so the load from slab will transfer to beam and the beam will transfer the load to the column here we are calculating the load from slab directly to columns second we need to calculate the load from roof beam so this roof beam will be having the load of self weight plus self weight of wall you can see here this is the plinth beam so on that plinth beam there is a wall and again this is the roof beam on that roof beam we will be having wall so the self weight and the weight of the wall is the load coming on the beam since we have calculated the slab load directly to the column we only need to consider the load from wall and self weight of the beam and next we need to calculate the self weight of the column so for this structure these three are the major important load which is coming on the column first let's calculate the slab load to columns here i have taken the slab so this is the influence area to columns so consider four columns here so this this way we need to divide the area the portion shaded here this area load will go to column c1 and this area load will go to column c2 similarly this area load will go to c3 and this area load will go to c4 so let's see how to calculate that slab thickness is 125 mm we need to calculate the self weight of the slab self weight of the slab is thickness multiplied by unit weight of for cc so that is 3.125 kN per meter square next floor finish 1.5 kN per meter square live load these two are the dead loads and live load we need to consider 2 kN per meter square since it is a small residential building let Let's take it as a 2 kN per meter square. So total load is dead load plus live load that comes around 6.625 kN per meter square. Influence area. So for column C1, this is the area. So 5 feet 6 inches and this side also 5 feet 6 inches. So if we calculate that, 2.79 meter square. So this area is 2.79 meter square. I know this area and then I know the total load coming on this area. Now I can calculate the column load. Slab load on column is equal to total load multiplied by the area. And this two is I have two slabs, two floors, right? So I have two slab. So that's why I'm multiplying with two. So the total slab load on column is thirty six point nine six kilonewton. Next, let's calculate the load from beam. As we have seen in the geometry, we have plinth beam, first floor beam, and second floor beam. So one by one, we need to calculate. So here, if we consider for column C one, we'll be having two beams are connected with column C one. So half of the load from B one will come to column C one. Similarly, half of the load from B three will come to column C one. Let's say the floor heights. 
below plinth level that is 1.68 meter and floor height is 3 meter here also we have 3 meter floor height and here we are having parapet wall of 1 meter height so this is the height we need to consider while calculating the wall load first let's calculate load from plinth beam so here we are having 4 plinth beams so for column c1 pb1 plinth beam 1 and plinth beam 3 load will come not the full load half of the load will come so let's see how do we calculate that let's consider the plinth beam size as 300 by 375 mm self weight of the plinth beam first we need to calculate self weight is the size of the beam multiplied by the unit weight so 0.3 multiplied by 0.375 multiplied by the unit weight so we get 2.81 kN per meter next self weight of wall on plinth beam we need to calculate here the wall thickness is 0.3 and 3 is the floor height minus 0.375 is the beam depth so we need to deduct the beam depth from the floor height multiplied by the unit weight of brick so that i have considered as 20 kN per meter cube so we get the value is 15.75 kN per meter let's consider this b pb1 and the span is 3.35 meter these two are the support c1 and c2 are the support for plinth beam 1 so the load coming on the plinth beam 1 is 18.56 kN per meter so that is 15.75 plus 2.81 so this two load we need to add so that comes around 18.56 kN per meter now we need to calculate the load on c1 and c as we know that 18.56 multiplied by 3.35 divided by 2 w l by 2 which gives you the load coming on c1 so that is coming around 31.08 so this is from pb1 so p from pb1 31.08 kN is coming to column c1 similarly we need to calculate pb3 as well pb3 span is also same and load is also same so we need to multiply into 2 so that comes around 62.16 so altogether on column c1 the load is 62.16 similarly column c2 also 62.16 kN next let's calculate the load from first floor beam it is similar concept as like plinth beam first we need to calculate the self weight of the beam the beam size is as similar as plinth beam 300 by 375 mm self weight of the beam and self weight of the wall on beam so here also the same concept we have to use and if we take this beam the load coming on beam is 18.56 kN per meter so we need to calculate the load coming on c1 and c2 wl by 2 the same load will come and if we calculate the load from b3 we need to multiply it by 2 so that comes around 62.16 so the column c1 is having 62.16 similarly column c2 also will be having 62.16 kN next let's calculate load from second floor beam beam size is 300 by 375 mm self weight of the beam is 0 0.3 by 0 0.375 multiplied by unit weight of rcc self weight of parapet wall on beam here you have to remember that there is no full wall is coming on the beam we have only parapet wall so we need to consider only parapet wall so the height of the parapet wall is 1 meter thickness of the beam is 0 0.3 width of the beam is 0 0.3 multiplied by height of the parapet wall is 1 meter multiplied by unit weight so this is the difference between the first floor roof beam and the second floor beam so we get 6 kN per meter we have to consider this beam 1 and the load coming here is 6 kN per meter from this we need to calculate c1 and c2 w l by 2 we need to do here so if we do that we get 10.05 kN from b1 we need to calculate from b3 as well so multiplied by 2 we get 20.1 so from second floor beam we get 20.1 kN for column C1 as well as column C2 and last we need to calculate load from column self weight of the column self weight of the column we need to calculate by the size of the column multiplied by the total height floor height multiplied by 25 25 is the unit weight here we don't know the size of the column so just I have mentioned it as B and D this is the total height and this is the unit weight of RCC so we get some x kN now let's find out the total load on column load from slab is 36.96 kN load from beam all together I have added uh, the plinth beam load first floor beam load second floor beam load everything it comes around 144.42 kN so total load on column is 180 
21.38 km. As I told you before, we have not added the self weight of the column. So instead of that, let's consider 10% extra load. So that comes around 18.1. 10% extra of this total load. So that comes around 18.1. Let's add it together and then we get 199.48 kN. So let's consider 200 kN for column C1. Now we know the load coming from column. So let's find out the safe load carrying capacity of column as per IS456-2000 class number 39.3. So the formula is PO is equal to 0.4 FCK AC plus 0.67 FY ASC. PO is the axial load on the member. FCK is the characteristics compressive strength of concrete. AC is the cross-sectional area of column. FY is the characteristic strength of compressive reinforcement. ASC is the area of longitudinal reinforcement for column. Now let's see how to find out the size of the column using this formula. If unfactored load is PU is the factored load, unfactored load is 200 kN, here I am multiplying with the factor of safety 1.5, so that is 300 kN. So my factored load is 300 kN, FCK is 25 N per mm square and AC we don't know, that is the size of the column, so let's keep it as it is. Next FY is 500 N per mm square, area of steel as per IS456-2000 we need to consider 0.8% to 6% of the gross sectional area of the column. So usually we don't go up to 6% because the placing of concrete is very difficult if we go up to 6%. Usually we restricted to 4%. AG is the gross sectional area. Gross sectional area means area of concrete plus area of steel. Let's consider area of steel as 0.8% of the gross area. Since Minimum percentage of steel for column is 0.8%. Let's consider 0.8% as the area of steel. We know the gross area is equal to area of concrete plus area of So instead of area of steel, let's substitute 0.8% of the gross area. From this, we can find out the area of concrete as 0.992 AG. Let's substitute all these values in this formula. 0.4 FCK is 25, AC is 0.992 AG plus 0.67 FY is 500 multiplied by 0.08 AG that is 8% of gross area, 0.8% of gross area. By solving this we get AG is 8169.93 mm square. So this is the gross area. From this we can find out the size of the column. We know the AG value that is gross area of the column. From that we need to find out the breadth and depth of the column. Minimum width of column shall not be less than 20 dB or 300 mm as per IS 13920 class number 7.1. dB is the diameter of the largest longitudinal bar in the beam passing through or anchoring to the column. Minimum dia for beam is 12 mm longitudinal bar. So 10 mm also we can use that is for very when the less load is coming even we can go with the 10 mm bar. Here let's consider 12 mm bar as a longitudinal bar. So 12 multiplied by 20 that is 20 dB that comes around 240 mm. So let's consider this as a width of the column. So area is equal to B multiplied by D. We know that D is equal to area divided by D. So we get 34.04 mm and depth we cannot use this much less size. So we have to consider it as a square column and we can provide 300 by 300 mm column size. Size of the column is 300 by 300 mm. Reinforcement area, let's consider 0.8 percentage. So 0.8 percent of 300 by 300 we need to calculate. So the area comes around 720 mm square. So we, we have to provide 4 number of 16 mm dia bar. So that's what it is given here, 4 number of 16 mm dia bar. And lateral ties need to calculate. According to IS456-2000, the pitch of transverse reinforcement shall not be more than the least of the following distances. First one is least lateral dimension of the compression member that is 300 mm. So least lateral dimension of the member is 300 mm. Next 16 times the smallest diameter of longitudinal reinforcement bar to be tied. So the longitudinal bar reinforcement we have here as 16 mm only. So we don't have two different kind of uh, dia bars only one dia bar we have so 16 only we need to take 16 times 16 is 256 and third one is 300 mm so among these three which is the least one that we have to use 
so 256 is the least among these three so we have to use 8 mm at 260 mm center to center that means 8 mm dia bar at 260 mm center to center so this is the reinforcement details next let's calculate the load carrying capacity of the column as we know the size of the column and area of steel so let's calculate the load carrying capacity by using this formula so if we apply all these values in this formula it comes around 1169.34 kN so whatever the load we had calculated was 300 kN only the load carrying capacity of the column that means like the cross section whatever we have chosen and the reinforcement whatever we had provided that has more load carrying capacity than the load which we have arrived from this we can conclude that the size of 300 by 300 column and the reinforcement 4 number of 16 mm dia bar can carry the load up to 1169 kN. We can reduce the column size though the code has mentioned that we have to go for the column size of 300 mm but still it is a ductile code the IS 13920 is the ductile detailing code but this is a very small structure whatever we have taken so if it is a kind of small structure or it is not prone to earthquake zone and all so we have to go for lesser size we can reduce the column size 300 mm is the 12 inch but we can go up to 9 inch 9 inch at least minimum 9 inch column we have to provide whether it is a g plus 1 building g plus 2 building whether it is prone to earthquake zones or not minimum size we need to provide 9 inch column size we need to provide minimum as a 9 inch size and reinforcement we can reduce up to 12 mm because minimum dia of bar we need to use as per IS456 for columns is 12 mm bar so instead of 4 dia 16 we can go with 4 dia 12 let's check that one let's consider the size as 9 inch by 9 inch that is 225 by 225 mm area of steel as 4 dia 12 instead of 4 dia 16 here I have taken as 4 dia 12 and FCK FY values are same let's apply these values in this formula so we get PU as 657.67 kN even that is greater than 300 kN load which we have arrived so if we take this size like 225 by 225 size and 4 dia 12 even this size and this reinforcement can carry the load up to 657.67 kN. Now you can come to know the difference like how we can arrive the load and how we can check the load carrying capacity of the column. So according to the loads coming on the structure, the size of the columns may vary. But this is the general procedure to arrive the loads coming on column and to arrive the column size. So friends, I hope you all like this video. Please do comment in the comment box and don't forget to subscribe the channel for more videos. Share it with your friends and hit the like button. Thank you for watching.